to season three, episode four of the What You Thinking podcast. I'm Eric. I'm Vince. I'm Ivana. Welcome, Ivana. Welcome to the show. We're happy to have you on as our special guest today. How are you feeling? I'm so excited. I'm really, really excited to be here. Yeah? yeah Blast from the past. We all go back so many years. Yeah, yeah we're no, getting old don't now. let me know how old we are. Or how long we've known <laughs> each other. This is like elementary school. Facts. Yeah, so for today we have a few topics. Um, we're going to start with the hit the brakes or carry on topics. So for the first one, I have should the lyrics of music artists be used against them in court? Uh, what do you guys think about that? Do you want to hit the brakes or do you want to carry on from that? I don't want to carry on. Yeah, carry on. Okay. I think it's pretty self explanatory. Like, lyrics shouldn't be used. People say, yeah. people cap all day in their lyrics. So you can't use that. It's a fact. Facts, facts. So let's carry on. All right. So for the second topic we have with inflation around, uh, what does that mean for the future for many? You want to hit the brakes or you want to carry on from that? Uh, I feel like we can hit the brakes. To be honest, I feel like there's still not a lot that I know about inflation. I just know it affects everything with the, pri- the prices going up. But like the root of it, um, long-term versus short-term effects and all that. So I'm down to hit the brakes and see what you guys have to say about it. Okay. Yvonne, do you have anything? Yeah. I, I would say I definitely want to talk about this because I saw this guy did a video and he was he was like talking about inflation. And, and he I guess he was joking, but he was saying like, you know, like, if you're broke now, like you're still broke, so you don't even have to worry about it. Like you're not going to get affected, which is kind of messed up to say. But I do wonder. Like, I mean, I just kind of feel like the the disparities in in wealth in general, like especially in the states. I feel like who was really affected by this is my question. Right. You know, and in what way? Um, Probably the middle class, I would imagine, is most affected by inflation, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, so inflation, so it's 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 a very broad topic because you have a lot of people who were already going through a lot during the pandemic, right? You know, pandemic, is it never left. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Um, but as it as things kind of like progress, like we start going back outside, hitting the yachts, doing all the stuff that we did before, some people were still effed up. You know, some people were still relying on the government to give them money. Some people were still trying to get ahead like in their job some people were trying to get you know new experiences yada 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 but all those things were cut off because of like their situation so now inflation's here you know literally if you're trying to like if you're trying to bust a movie with, with your boys or your girls in your car like you need to at least have 50 dollars to put in that tank and then on top of that when you get to the spot you have to drop another amount of bread and then on top of that Depending on the kind of car you have, you either have to put gas in it the next two days, which is going to be a hundred dollars out of your pocket, or even more. So it just it just keeps piling up. So basically, if you're in like middle class, you you weren't making those moves when you felt like you needed to. It's going to be harder for you to do it now. So that kind of goes back to what Ivana was saying about the person that basically said like, if you're poor, don't worry about it because I mean, as harsh as it is, if you're poor right now, if you're like not really where you want to be, it's going to be even ten times harder to get ahead now because of inflation so it's like it's like a downward spiral for some people i don't, I don't want to be that guy that's like haha but like it's kind of it's kind of what it is what do you guys think mm. so who's affected the most who's affected the least would you say in your opinion i would say so me personally like my from my perspective like you have the middle class and then it's like now it's like you have the lower middle class you have the medium middle class or like average and then you have like the high middle class slash like you know wealthy so mm-hmm. because the middle class has been split into like three different parameters it's like you don't really have the the answer for it it's unless it, it's it's all based on like what people are doing as far as like you know new experiences you know money on the side like whatever passive income or like what you're really doing to kind of like make yourself relevant financially or if you're just like uh-huh. someone who had like foreign parents who are just like yeah if you see of your money yeah if you do it yeah if you do you know then like you know what i'm saying like you had the advantage because at least you know how to save you know how to manage your money but if right. unfortunately if you didn't have that and like you spent like your entire 20s like pushing up on 30 at our big age like and not really understanding how to manage your finances it's going to be 10 times harder for you to get ahead now because of inflation mm-hmm. you buy a if you were to like big heavy on the pause here but like if you would if you bought a banana like two years ago well, you're dropping like a dollar, a dollar fifty. Now you have to spend at least three dollars for one banana. Like, 
That's crazy. So yeah. like it's kind of it's kind of like a back and forth. I would say. I'm kind of torn, and because I think like, so I'm gonna sound really smart, and then I'm gonna sound really corny. So <laughs> <laughs> I feel like like innovation in the workforce is like so different and by that I mean like now you can work remotely right and what's happening now is for example so long story short I went to Oklahoma shout out to anybody who's in Oklahoma and they have this thing called like in Tulsa called the Tulsa remote program and basically the government will pay people upwards of twelve thousand dollars to move out to Oklahoma and work remote jobs out there as a way to like build up their economy. So I kind of feel like, and there's actually like 71 cities across the country that's doing these prep programs. Like they'll pay you to come live in their like small metropolitan area and just build it up. And I feel like it's kind of the thing where it's like, because our workforce is changing, you can do a hybrid, you can like work, you, you don't have to be in the office. There's different ways to spread wealth. Kind of gives me this idea of like, we can work we're, let's try to find a way to work around this because like we know like after trump like we're fucked like it, it, that's just that's just where we are right now and, mm -hmm. and i just think that now be, with after the pandemic like to feel like okay there's different ways to make money like let's i think like cities are trying to find ways to like work with that so i know it's like scary right now but i think there is a light at the end of the tunnel I mean, maybe right now gas is terrible and groceries, I don't know, might have make them eggs stretch. But there are other ways that like we're even like as our generation, that's like finding ways to make money that isn't necessarily like working, cl clocking in or like physically being in a nine to five. And I think that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Eric, you have anything? Huh? Want to add to that? No. Huh. I know that this was just learning for me with this topic because I've been wanting to find yeah, out more about it's, it. It's it's definitely a little crazy and and just to before we exit this topic, just to brush up on what Ivana said, like that's actually something that I was reading about, so I, I I'm definitely aware of that. Um, also, it's it's another so like the world is changing, right? So since the pandemic happened, a lot of people, including myself, have like remote jobs. So you know, with that being said, you have to kind of like. So as a society, we have to kind of like figure out where that income is coming from. We have to monetize that. So like, all right. So for example, like yesterday I went in the gym, there was this guy, this guy had to be at least 20, 21, 20. He had like a ring light next to him while he was like working out, you know, obviously that's going to go online. That might give him some passive income or he's just doing it to please some shorties. But anyways, um, make a long story short, a lot of like towns, just like the one Ivana was basically talking about Oklahoma. They're they're running those kinds of programs just to kind of see like what what kind of what kind of revenue they can they can bring in from individuals who are working remote. Because if someone let's let's be real, if someone is working remote, they're most likely gonna come out the house to go to Dairy Queen or like go to the gym, right? Or maybe go on a couple dates here and there, yada yada yada, whatever. But at the end of the day they're going back home. It's not like like when someone who let's say this kid, there's a guy, young guy or young girl lives in Hoboken um works nine to five gets off goes to the bar might hit the city here and there come back to the house like watch netflix go to sleep wake up do it again right like the chance of that person spending a lot of money like when they get off of work are a little bit higher than someone who works remotely so you know it kind of makes sense like hey we have these guys who work remote let's bring them here let's see what they do let's see their habits let's see if we can like track their cookies on their computer to send them some ads probably make some money off of them that way or like let's just Let's just see like what we can possibly make off of them as far as like something that's beneficial for the economy. I feel like that's kind of like what the system that's, that they're trying to play. Yeah, I completely agree. So the next topic, we have monkeypox. That's like the next big virus. Um, what do you guys think will happen to, to society if we get shut down again? Do you want to hit the brakes or do you want to carry on from that? Yeah, let's hit the brakes. <laughs> All right. Eric, it's, I don't think we'll get there, but like the economy would be super hurt from it, and I just think a lot of businesses. We're, I feel like companies are still like desperately trying to like get out of what we were in before and still recover sure. from the two years we were all at home. So that would be really bad. But you know, fortunately, this one that doesn't have like a death toll, like you know, like COVID. It just looks disgusting. Like I wish people would stop showing it on social media. That's how nasty it looks. But uh, yeah, thankfully it's not as deadly.
That's what I was gonna say. It's very interesting to me. I feel like there is more fear based around monkeypox because of how it looks, right? Like yeah. COVID, people will still go to the club, but oh my gosh, I'm gonna have like these monstrous things on my face. Now I'm really scared. No one touch me. I'm not gonna go outside. Like I just feel like the reaction is so different because of the cosmetic changes rather rather than like the health. That's facts. You know. Yeah, especially in this day and age, like, people really focus on, like, appearance. So, like, if you have that on your mouth, they're like, oh, no, is that monkeypox or is that, like, an STD? Like, yeah, that's what they're thinking of because it looks like you can't escape it. Like you said, you could look like you're in perfect health from COVID, and it's fine. Nobody bats an eye. But this you can see. So it's like, oh, no. You know, they're like, people act a little more quick, quickly with this one. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely that, that factor that's in there. And also, like like you said, like, the world did change a lot after being shut down from COVID. Like a lot of a lot more people were doing a lot more visual things. Like a lot more people were blogging, a lot more people were, were like doing podcasts like us. Um, so a lot more people were doing things where they need to be seen in order to make money. Some people don't have a nine to five, you know, and just like you have like these guys on on like like for example, like you have OnlyFans, you have like you have like all these guys who are like putting out these little like courses online where it's like you see them they see you and like they're doing like tech reviews or doing this or doing that so like it's the the visual aspect of it if, like that's i think that's what's really scaring people and honestly like i feel like we didn't we haven't really gotten a fair shot at like starting our adult lives really because like yeah we came out of high school some of us graduated from college but it's like when we really began doing things like the world shut down for us like our generation and so it's like for us for that to happen to us again like i feel like that would really mess up a lot of things especially like the simple fact that a lot of us don't really have kids because of like covid you know they a lot of people weren't able to meet their significant other around that time um a lot of people weren't really able to like have that those social gatherings like i feel like it would be it will be det detrimental for a lot of us, you know, if we were to get shut down from this again. Uh, but I'm just going to keep, like, heavy on the pause again. I'm going to keep knocking on wood and, like, hoping that this doesn't, you know, affect us for the long run. Uh, you guys want to add anything? We can't even speak these days without the pause. <laughs> no, please. I feel like, here's my thing, right? There are people, I think people coming back into, like, I'm going to say back into society, like, the transition was really weird. So I don't know if for you guys, so I live in DC and I just feel like once we got out of like quarantine phase, we started going back out, it was just much more aggressive. Like I feel like people had been on pause for so long that it was just like this built up, like, I don't know if it was anxiety or what, where like fights were just way more prevalent. It, it was just like, I feel like if we were to go and shut down again, I don't know how many people mental health wise would be able to Bounce back. Like I think it was really yeah. hard, and like and yeah, either people either people weren't meeting anyone and you weren't having kids, or yeah, you were having kids and fuck. Now you've got this kid and the economy's going to shit, and and your mental health is messed up. So it's just like to me, it's like it definitely probably wouldn't. Even though I like enjoy being in the crib, it I don't think as a whole it would be something that would be like helpful i know people try to say like oh remember the days we were like you know in quarantine i'm like yeah like maybe like binging for the first shows for the first like three days was dope but then like after a month people were losing their shit i mean think we all remember celebrities singing on camera for us to stay together or whatever that nut ass shit was like, thank you <laughs> i just think that <laughs> like, is like all that. it would not be beneficial for our next topic is the what in the world topic so there's a distillery that's turning green crabs into whiskey right so this is something that i actually picked up on an article from um, npr.org um so basically green crabs are like a invasive species so like they come in like a pack right um so there's a distillery is based off the coast of new hampshire and it's capturing these crabs um and it is literally turning them into whiskey and serving them to customers so you know me personally like i stopped drinking like whiskey and beer all types of all that weird shit. i stopped drinking it personally but 
you know, for people, I don't know if you guys still drink, like, and beer so and stuff like that. At all? Like, I, I mean, like, if, if I'm out with, like, a group of friends, maybe I might, but, like, mm -hmm. me personally, to go to the liquor store and buy beer, like, that's crazy. Like, I'm not, I'm not about to wow. do that. Um, you keep it in the crib? Yeah, I'm not, I'm just not into beer anymore. I feel like I've done, like, I've done that so much, like, when I was much younger, it's like, I'm good. I'm good off that. But, like, what do you guys think? Would you guys try that whiskey? Like, how do you guys feel about that? Mm -hmm. I just feel like that's a weird mix. Crabs and whiskey. I probably would stay away from it. Unless someone's like, oh, try, try, try. Like, maybe yeah. get me, catch me in a spontaneous moment. But I wouldn't go get that on my own. I probably need, like, ten shots of handy before I pick up a glass of that. Fine, what about you? What do you think? You're twirling your hair like you would try it. So, what's going on? probably take my time. <laughs> this is super pause no freakiness but i will try anything once i wouldn't mind to try it now personally like i am a tequila person like whiskey has never been something that i've been interested in but if it were like oh just try you know try a glass of it just to see what it's like then I, i'm not super against it but then again i also like when it comes to like different foods and stuff like i'll try just try just to more so be adventurous not because of, not for anything like because I believe in like certain sustainability or anything like that. I just we just kind of just try just to try. Sidebar: What are your thoughts on oysters? I like oysters. Yeah. Never I feel like they're it. so hyped up, and there's like I tried it once, like this past winter for the first time. I was like, eh, what was it all the hype about? Like it wasn't bad. It just wasn't. I just don't think it was worth the hype. <laughs> I like oysters. I like oysters, and so okay, I like oysters, and like my my boyfriend doesn't, so I'll get like the whole thing. And it's just like you build with this big, with this big plate with all this ice and the oysters. And I'm just taking it back, and he's just looking at me. Yeah. What kind of sauce do you? I think it's a Jamaican in them. <laughs> yeah, certain, certain things y'all might not get, not get touch. Y'all might not get touch certain things. <laughs> I'll use like I'll do I'll do their um like that vinegar that they have, and then I'll do like hot sauce sometimes. A little old thing, little thing on it. Eat the crackers after. Don't get me started. Okay. I like oysters. Because I feel like that's the, the flavor it takes on, like, whatever sauce, as opposed to the oyster itself. And for a lot of people, it's a texture thing, so they can't get around, like, the squishiness of the oyster. Yeah, if, you, yeah. if you're well, if you're downing oysters like that, I feel like you wouldn't have an issue with this crab whiskey. Like, if, you, if yeah. you're downing oysters... Downing oysters like that, because I'm not, like, waking up every morning, like, <laughs> oyster, <laughs> so happy. Hey, like, yo. <laughs> I mean, I mean, look. Based on based on what you just said, like, if you like oysters like that, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have an issue if your whiskey tastes like mahi mahi. So, to each his own. <laughs> Lobster roll whiskey too. While we're at it, moving on from that. Um, so far, I hear I hear me out. Topics for mine. I have. Um, is it really a bad thing to make new friends while replacing old ones? Um, do you guys want to say anything before I do? Before we get into that. Um. I thought like you should elaborate first. Okay, yeah. So, you know, for a lot of us, especially where we grew up, you know, not so, you know, we're just, just going to leave it at that. Um, a lot of people have changed as we've, as we've gotten older. A lot of us have changed as we've gotten older, especially, like, as we've stepped into, like, our, you know, career development, personal development, whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. Some of us... You know, sad to say, have lost important people in our lives. A lot, like a lot, some of our friends have lost their 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 parents. You know, some some of them have lost like siblings. Unfortunately, you know, um, and whether you like it or not, when when these things happen, they do change you a lot, right? So let's say something like that happened to you, and then your friends still want to go to the bar. They still want to do old things, but you're literally like over it because certain things have happened to you are like you know you might be for it but like at the same time it's like you still continuing continuing to go to ringside with your boys or like go to the bar in hoboken or whatever like for you to still be doing that you might you might drink a little bit more than, than them because of what's happened to you you know you go through a break like it, a lot of things that basically what i'm trying to say is a lot of things do happen a lot of things will change you so it kind of makes sense in certain cases to have new friends to kind of like, you know, help you navigate through those things. Like if you have a friend who's, I don't know, gone through that already, who can give you like insight on how to move forward from that. Um, or if you have like an old friend who kind of changed a little bit, but like 
you know, you're making six figures, they're still making 40000 but you want to learn how to buy houses on properties, like, I feel like that would be the, the best time to kind of, like, network and make new friends with different, for, like, you know, better reasons. But, I mean, I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think? I definitely feel like it's good to always make friends. It's kind of like, um, not to, like, go off topic, something like Charlamagne the God said not that long ago, where he was like, he hates that Drake and DJ Khaled song, No New Friends. Because, like, in life, you're constantly making new friends, right? And I, I think not even just for, like, career opportunities, just in general. Like, different parts of your life you, like, require and you want different things. Like, you can have a group of friends that you were super tight with when you were young, but then you outgrow each other when you get older. Different parts of your life require different energies that you'll want. So with that being said, I see no point in just, like, keeping, like, your circle too tight to the point where you don't even want to, like, get to know other people. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's good to, you know always expand your circle but you know i'm a person that believes less is more in that sense like there's a you can have 30 friends but like only four of them are solid you know so why do all that as opposed to just having like a small knit circle but still like getting to know people um so i definitely think it's it's a good thing to you know make new friends while like getting rid of old ones and, and vice versa no matter how you like you know look at it i would say um because i think there's could always be something from it and i think too like in friendships something that doesn't get talked about enough is like different people bring different things into your life that I know I said it before like that you need but like just think about it. you can have like a friend that's funny um you can have a friend that provides you like reason when sometimes you're a little like you're not that reasonable um you can have a friend that's kind of like I know girls talk about time like the mother of the, the mother of the friend group where someone is kind of like telling you like all right this is what you're thinking but like this makes more sense let's be responsible you know but I think with that being said we should have a diversified friend group yeah I agree People feel that I feel like to my perspective um, it's similar but it's a little different I think that I think in general as you evolve friends evolve right so like as you're doing certain things or different things like the people that are gonna be in your universe are gonna either weed themselves out or, or make their way in you, you know if you end up having a kid like you're probably gonna have more friends that are moms because they just get it if you know you're going through, if you're in a relationship, you may find yourself hanging out with a couple more couples because your partner has a buddy who has a girlfriend, and that you know that kind of thing. But the same sense, I think that like a lot of times, you have to be open to like new experiences to be able to decide whether you still fit with certain. I'm going to call them tribes. So like, I feel like sometimes if you stay and like, if you you know stay in one place. For a really long time like if you don't you know you know move or try different things that you may be into then like you'll only know your really small orbit and I think that that's like I know just to keep it really brief we're from a kind of a smaller area in New Jersey and that kind of happens where sometimes people get stuck in the mindset of just only know who's in your vicinity and you never try to go and branch out so you don't to experience anything else or anyone else so it's easy to say oh no friends because you don't know any better and even if you go through something personally if you're going through something personal but you're still in that same spot you may feel like something's missing but you don't even know it because you've never taken the chance to experience it um anything mm -hmm. other than what you're accustomed to so like where you're at the same people you've hung out with since you were a kid like and i can see why people would get into that cycle i don't like to look at it as getting rid of or replacing because i feel like we don't talk about the fact that like friendships are just as intimate as romantic relationships as your family like a friendship breakup that shit sucks and that can be hurtful like it's not just like all right i outgrew you peace like no you were with me for certain chapters so we do have an intimate relationship there's just more flexibility because i don't know we're not dating or you're not my cousin or sister like but it's still yeah. just as there's still you know blood is thicker than water but sometimes you choose you choose who your blood is and like i feel like that needs to be considered too that it's not necessarily like getting rid of somebody or like oh i'm on to new things so like see you later i don't care you still impacted my life and i think that that allowed to mourn or feel a certain way of about a friendship changing and people going in different directions mm -hmm. To piggyback off of that, something that stuck out to me is like the closed-minded part. I would say, because of our hometown, like we have a unique situation where if we did like, because we can say like as a rule of thumb, you shouldn't keep your circle like too small and not be open to meeting new people. 
But I think if one was to do that, I would prefer them to come from a town like our town. Just because like, there's so many different people from different walks of life that we're such a highly cultured group of people, I would say, that are from that area. Whereas, like, if you're from some town that has, like, I don't know, let's say some random town in Pennsylvania that has, like, three people of color. Like, you know, like, if you're going to be in that tight friend group, there's a whole big chunk of the world you'll never get to know of people that think differently. Um, so I would say it's better to be from, like, a diverse group if you're going to keep a super tight circle. That makes sense. Um, and, I mean, just to piggyback on that, like, I would say we were definitely fortunate to, like, grow up in an environment where we were that diverse because, like, even for me growing up, like, one of my best friends, I would say, was, like, Asian, but I just went, I just did it based, I was friends with him based on his name, right? So it was, like, it kind of allowed us to see, like, how different cultures operated and it kind of helped us, like, even now, like, as adults, like, if I meet anyone, if I meet literally anyone at a restaurant, wherever it is, like, I know how to have a conversation with them that would go, like, further than that just that one night. Or if I go to, like, a party or a bar, like, and I talk to, like, five people, like, you know, next thing you know, like, we're, we're at Top Golf together, right? So, you know... The location that we grew up in, like, it definitely played a huge role in who we are now. But, but yeah, just to piggyback on what Ivana said, like, you don't want to miss those experiences or those opportunities to meet those people from other areas, right? So, like, you know, she grew up in, in Mapso as well, but now she's in D.C., right? So, you know, over there, you, I'm pretty sure you met, like, dozens of new people. But this if you dope. were, like, if you were, like, oh, I'm from Mapso, like, you know, go screw, like, I'm only going to be associated with people that, like, I grew up with, like, imagine all the experiences that, you know, she would have missed out on, right, so it just, it just goes to show, like, you know, as you get older, or, like, you know, if you happen to move, or whatever the case may be, don't be afraid to meet new, to meet new people, or make new friends, obviously, use your best judgment, just like, you know, if you're trying to find a significant other, if you go on that first date, and that person is already trying to smack you or like punch you in the face or lips or like hit run you over with their car like you know like if you step into that relationship you're stepping into like a tyler perry movie basically right so just yeah. try to like just try to think about all these things try to Why like look for the, right yeah exactly like look for all the signals and signs and friendship just like you would do in a relationship and honestly use your best judgment as you move forward and don't be scared because life is all about those experiences Imagine going on a first date and somebody try to run over you with their car. That's a bit much. <laughs> That's <is crazy. laughs> I would like to know the story. <laughs> that was a little alarming, Vince, to use that as an example. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> hey, do you have a story for us? Yeah, let's unpack that. <laughs> you got real specific. What kind of car? <laughs> <laughs> Who almost got deleted by a car? Let's just leave it at that, okay? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah. So, okay, for my topic, is something I saw, I think it was, like, on uh, Spiritual World, which is, like, one of my favorite pages, but you see so much, like, toxicity on there sometimes. Uh, this woman was, like, <laughs> she was, like, ladies, I need to tell you something. Like, you're going to hate me for saying this, but, like, quit coming into a relationship trying to make a man secure your insecurities. And uh, that was, like, interesting and, like, really heavy for me. Uh, I agree, though. Like, I think not just women, I think just people, like, I think there's a difference between being an insecure person versus having insecurities. Like, a lot of people have insecurities. Um, there's always something that people think could be better and, like, they don't want people to know about their lives. Um, but when you walk into a relationship, I feel like you shouldn't, like, put that on them to be like, okay, you're supposed to secure this. Like, I genuinely feel like in a relationship, let alone, like, a marriage, for example, you know, someone's choosing to have you in their life despite your quote-unquote flaws. But don't make it their, like, that the criteria that they have to make you forget about that insecurity. No, like, they're loving you in spite of it. But I think if you put that on them as, like, okay, if this box isn't checked off, they're an insufficient girlfriend or insufficient boyfriend or husband or wife, I don't think that's fair to do. Um, but I was wondering what you guys' thoughts were on that one. I agree, because I don't <laughs> think that there's a perfect partner, so we can just start right. there. there. There's never, you're never going to be, meet, like, someone that's going to be, 
a hundred percent perfect. Like if you can find someone that's like eighty five percent, then you your compromise is that other fifteen percent that they may be lacking. Mm-hmm. But you know, don't you think maybe I just want to ask you all that it would take like it would take a lot of self awareness from a person to know that they're putting their insecurities or they're bringing their insecurities into the next relationship. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think they'd have to be someone who um, is big, like in the mental health space, and is like knowledgeable in that sense, and or goes to therapy. Because I think that's one thing that's super. I always talk about it on this podcast. That's super dope about therapy. It's like you're providing a perspective that like is outside of your own body. Like you're looking at yourself as things have affected you, and that allows you to see clear and realize in real time like how something affects you, why it's affecting you that way. So if you're knowledgeable with that, then you're realizing like, yeah, X, Y, and Z are my insecurities. And this I'm more to hear about than that, you know? So definitely, like you said, it takes self-awareness. You have to be aware, A, that that is your insecurity, and B, that you react in whatever way because of it being making you feel insecure. One thing that like, I really believe in and recommend to like a lot of like younger people is like, you know, just an example, all right, so like, let's say you're like 19, 20, 21, whatever, those really young ages where like, you're trying to figure yourself out. Let's say you went through like a bad breakup, right? And like, that breakup like, hurts you a lot. Like, it hurt the shit out of you. Like, you've been, like, your posts on Instagram have been crazy, you've been at the gym every day. You know, like, we, I'm pretty sure you you guys have been there before. Like, when you go through that mindset, Absolutely. it's just like... Got my heart stopped on, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> when you go when you go through that when you go through that I mean like and not everyone goes through it so that's why I'm talking about it but like when you go through something like that like it literally puts you in the in the position to it's like your blood is boiling like no other it's like you're on cloud nine literally and then in that specific time period when you have your downs and you're sitting there and you're thinking about like everything that went wrong or everything that went the right way it literally uplifts your spirit and turns you into a completely different person, right? And throughout that time period, like, it's very important that you spend that time with yourself to, like, love yourself, number one, and get to know yourself on a different level as well, you know? Um, And I feel like that's important because when you go into a relationship, you're not really looking for someone to secure your insecurities. If anything, you're setting boundaries, right? So it's like, I already know that, like, after I chew my gum, I put it under the windowsill. Like, if you have a problem, then you can go and get a flathead screwdriver and, and scrape it off. Not saying that that's my issue, but I'm just saying, like, let's say that were someone's bad habit, right? If you're going to, like, leave someone for that, or if you're going to, like, if someone is telling you that they're not okay with that, and then you're saying, like, in order to be with me, you have to be okay with it, then, like, that's kind of weird, right? So it's like, I feel like a relationship, you have to remember, it's always going to be a two-way street no matter what. Like, you have to, like, no one's perfect, like Yvonne said, um, but you just have to have that, that open communication. Once you have that communication, it's literally up to the other person because you've already set your boundaries. You know, this is who I am. This is what it is. Um, I'm not dependent on you to make me feel better about what I'm doing, but I would definitely like to hear that you don't like that I have this bad habit. So... Maybe I can think about like changing it if need be, right? I feel like so I I agree. And I also think like I'm trying to think realistically. I feel like sometimes people if you grew up, right, and you grew up in in and maybe your parents like they didn't they prioritize like school and not understanding how to navigate relationships or maybe you grew up and like your parents split up and didn't communicate correctly like okay this yeah me and me and dad didn't work out but this is how you should treat a a woman or this is how you should treat a man whatever the case may be I feel like sometimes if it's not you weren't taught it then you almost have to relearn or learn it for the first time as an adult and then you end up making mistakes when you're 25 26 27 or you end up staying and I mean think about the fact that like our generation has normalized situationships is insane it has to come from some sort of what we saw and then how we attribute it to now so even though i yes of course i would want like at at our age i want to 
I would want a partner that like can communicate. I would want a partner that understands understands me and I understand them and like whatever, what have you. But I'm also not surprised at how difficult dating is for us. No? Yeah. Because we all think we got a million and one options. I think. Yeah. You know, that's a big part of it. Um, social that media, is- dating apps and all that. We, we just all swear like, oh, I can replace that person. And realize like, oh, actually, we can't. Um, you know, and I think just to go back to what you were saying before, I think that's why so many people are single these days because, like, they A, nitpick, or B, just feel like, oh, I'm not going to put up with this. Um, no, so, they don't, they don't want to go through it. They just don't want to go through it. If, if yeah, anything, and they'd be like, if anything I'm difficult <laughs> comes up, if anything at all, yeah, if, if anything difficult comes up, they're just not with it. Like, I know, dude, yeah. I, I know girls that, like, the second they hear or see a dude start crying because, like, he has like daddy issues or whatever or mommy issues like they're out they're probably gonna stick around to like be like there there you need some tissue but like once they leave that door like that's it you're not hearing from them again like I'm yeah because they're assuming it's baggage oh, but everybody yeah. has baggage too that also comes in like to like just the black community and like how we deal with black masculinity like i feel like like a i i would, I would almost say and i mean I, I would like to know like if if you were if a or a white couple and they were to see their white boyfriend crying would it be that same thing because i feel like men especially black men from like childhood are conditioned to no you be a man you don't show your emotion like so if as a black woman if i rarely see that i do almost like a a fight or flight or freeze type of situation Mm. i think that's i think that's an even deeper like that would have to be a part two yeah that's yeah that's yeah (laughs) Yeah, there's definitely certain things in the black community that just don't fly, and vice versa, that are things that don't fly with other races, you know? Um, even something that's always talked about, too, also about uh, therapy and, like, talking about your feelings and stuff, like, you know? I think nowadays it's more talked about how, like, black men go through a lot, like, but so do black women. And that's why I think black love is such a superior, with all due respect to other races, it's such a superior, like, bonding of love, just because, like, just without each other, like individually, the struggles we have. So you can imagine together what the couples have to go through. So that yeah, needs to be and, talked and, about. That's and, part and also, like, just to piggyback on what you said, I, I do. So, like, one thing I noticed, especially like with the black community, you know, when you talk about like seeking therapy, it's it, it's almost like it's an insult, right? But I yeah. personally, I I want to normalize that, like. Some, some of you guys don't have, some people don't have anyone to talk to. So, like, if you're going to a licensed therapist to speak about issues that can make you, A, a better person for society and B, for yourself, I feel like you should just suck it up and just go. Like, there's there's nothing, it has nothing to do with ego. It has nothing to do, there's nothing to be ashamed of as well. Because I know, Eric, you, you, you mentioned that this is something that you used to do even when you were, like, younger, right? So, you know, you have insight on it right so like that's just one thing that i i feel like you know people should especially in in the black community we shouldn't feel ashamed to go to therapy to to speak about um certain things right so yeah i just want to add that part I completely agree with you like and same i i started going to therapy when i was like like a kid like i remember i was like 12 or 13 and i had to go and i remember going and i remember like feeling like embarrassed like I didn't want other people to know that I had to go but now I'm like it is so important you should look at it as like a doctor's checkup or look at it as like a gift to yourself to have this safe space to just be and examine you yeah. that is so important yeah. you should want someone else it's so stigmatized it is and you should want to yeah. date somebody who wants to value themselves too to the point that they want to take care of every aspect of their body including mm-hmm. their emotions mm-hmm. oh. couldn't agree more i Amen. think you know people get this image of like <laughs> people get this image of like you know you lying on like a leather couch and like crying about your traumas and triggers and stuff but it's not like that like you may have a session like that here or there but you're genuinely just opening up about everything and that way you don't have to carry this big burden around with you from your sunday to sunday um that's i think the beauty of it right so for yeah, our next hear me topic, for our next hear me out topic, we have Ivana. So what do you have today, Ivana? Uh, okay, so here's so I always do a poll um, 
on my Instagram. I love them. I love seeing people's responses like, oh, it's so exciting. And I use it to drive like my writing. But I had one that I thought was kind of uh, uh, fun. Fun and just quite, I don't know. I want to pick your brains and give you all think. So, it's a scenario. I, and I think, can I do that for a, for a hear me out? I can do like a scenario. Okay. Of course. Oh, all right. So, let's say you're about to get married. Yeah, you and your spouse have been together for a while. You know, this is, I mean, this is the real deal. And now it's time to pick your idol party or your groomsmen. And you've got a buddy that you, you know, you want to be in in the party, but your spouse does not like them. It just doesn't, doesn't, don't get along. It's just not it. And your spouse basically says like, you know, I don't feel comfortable having them at a wedding. Do you do? Do you do? And then I want to also know why, like, why is that your decision? Whatever it is that you choose. Uh... I, you want me to go first, guys? Yeah, please. <laughs> I would say, well, it depends, I think, on why they don't like them. If it's just like, a, oh, they rub me the wrong way, then I'd be like, sorry, baby, but I got you, you got to get over that one. Um, just because, like, this person has been in my life as a significant person for a long time, so I'm not going to disrespect them by not, like, in the group. Um, you know, I just feel like that would be an issue. Now, if, I don't know, if my friend sexually harass her friend or something then like i'd be like all right yeah th- this person's not gonna be at the party that's, that's there's no ifs ands or buts about it yeah because that's you know that's about comfortability and no one should feel uncomfortable but if it's just like a little like you, you can't give me a sufficient reason then i'm not you know we just gotta because think about it this isn't just your day this is my day too so we're compromising as it is so with that being said you know if it's not a good enough reason you have to get over that sweetheart <laughs> that's what i would say well, yeah, so what I would definitely do is try to, like, figure out what is triggering those emotions when it comes to that particular person. And based on that communication, like, me, I'm the kind of person who, like, no matter how bad it is, like, I'm going to try to figure out a resolution or, you know, equal playing ground for both parties, right? So I would I would ask those questions, and I would see, like, hey, you know, Based on what you just told me, do you think it would be? Do you think that it would like it would be ideal for you two to come together, to speak about this, and like try to find equal playing ground on it? Or like depending on what it is, like the example you mentioned, if it's something that's that bad, I personally would like side with my bride, and I personally would reach out to that person and let them know, like, you know, unfortunately, you know, we're we're not gonna be able to move forward with this idea. You know, but you know, I I wouldn't like bash the person, but I feel like if you're choosing to marry someone, and that person is like mentioning things that are very significant to them and important to them, you kind of like as a man, or like as a bride or a woman, you definitely have to listen to what that person is saying because like, yeah, this day is for you, but it's also for them too, right? And it's a day for the two of you to come together. And I don't know if it's just me, but, like, I would rather my bride be comfortable on that day because it's already a lot going on. Like, the pic- like from the pictures, from, like, I have ang- I know I'm going to, I would have anxiety in that particular situation because literally all of the spotlight is on us all day long. So I wouldn't want someone who's there that's going to, like, throw off your energy for this special day, right? So I feel like, I feel like those things just need to be done. So... I guess just to summarize what I said, you know, have that conversation, figure out what's going on, try to find equal playing fields if if possible, or like just say F it and, you know, go with what your partner is saying to you. So what, what do you think, Ivana? Because you are the female here. So let me see what you think. <laughs> so, so it's interesting because when I did this poll, I got a lot of people that said, that shows uh, they're going to be in they said they're going to be in the wedding Um, it's my wedding too i try to keep it broad because in general because i think that you're right there's so many specifics like 
for well, I, I, it would just suck in general to be in a relationship with someone and like they, they've got a close friend that like I don't get along with, or, or I've got a close friend that they don't get along with. Like that's so uncomfortable. I think like in my younger days I'd had a situation like that, and it did suck. Like deep down, it was like weird because I didn't want my partner to have to choose, but also it kind of sucks. <laughs> now I do think like really, it really would depend. And I feel really bad saying this, but I would, I'd really have to think about it because if there was something like this is supposed to be the person I spend the rest of my life with. And he's saying like, look, I, I really don't comfortable with this person in the, in the wedding party. I would, like, same with you, I would want to get down to the science of it. Like, well, why? Like, what's going on? Why do you feel this way? Is this like a true, like, you don't like this person for this, that, and third? Or is it like, is this like a sense of troll and MFF and if I allow this, then what else am I going to allow once we get married? Like, I think that there's so many different, like, aspects to this question that it's, it's hard. I, I think it's not black or white. I don't think it is just as easy saying, yeah, it's my wedding too. She's going to be in the thing or he's going to be in the thing. Um, I also don't think it is so easy to just be like, No, I'm not gonna let my friend be in the in you know in our bridal party. But it is a lot. Like weddings are a lot of pressure. It's a big day, and I would I want my day to be full of peace as much as I can. Yes. Because essentially, that's asking you to end a friendship. You know, because like that person is gonna look at you differently. Probably not be around you like that if you're like excluding them. Definitely, especially if you invited them and then you exclude from the party. Like that's like a slap in the face. Yeah, but not only that, not only that, like, for that particular situation, it's, it's like, it's kind of hard because if, so, like, everyone's different. Every Everyone's partner is going to be different for that particular day, right? But, like, I, like, I personally know there are people out there where it's, like, especially females or, like, or, like, guys, like, if they're telling their significant other that they're not okay with this person, like if you if that person insists on bringing that person there without any type of like communication or like some type of like equal playing playing grounds like they will leave that relationship like they will just say i'm not marrying you like we're done like they will just keep it moving from there because you know some people they some people people take things differently from others right so like i might be passive about something but there is someone out there who is like Yo, this is the equal to them giving giving you their car and you coming back with it totaled, right? So, like, some people are going to be more pissy about situations and, like, take it to that extreme. And some people are just going to be passive. Like, okay, you want them there, all right, whatever. You know? So, you know, you kind of have to, like, take that into consideration, I feel. I think it's a very big testament to, like, how you and your partner communicate. And yeah. I think this kind of question... Like if you are whoever listens to it or, or thinks about it, it would give you a lot of reflection. Okay, how do my me and my partner communicate? Or I do have a partner. How do I want us to communicate? Because something like this can arise. It's not that crazy, especially I feel like people who have like best friends of the opposite sex. Like we all know how that goes. It's always some foolishness because it's like people have to accept the change. Um, that's a new dynamic and I think like how can you and your partner tackle that is speaks volumes on you all as a couple that's true well said well said before we conclude this episode of the podcast Ivana I do know that you mentioned um, you're going to start a podcast soon um, so I want to give you the spotlight so you can kind of like tell everyone you know your Instagram you know what you're going to try to do for your podcast um, and also the name of it, so people can look for you as well. Okay. Well, yeah, I had so much fun today. First of all, this was like the best. Uh, I already ready. have. I already have a podcast out, um, uh, and it's it's actually very different from this and from my normal writing. It's Ivana Estelle True Crime, and I cover different true crime cases. It's a different uh, format. Is like I I mean like I write out a it's a whole thing <laughs> but i think you, you know you all would like it i think it's really important to have black voices in like the true crime community it's different from my other writing uh, so you can see that anywhere i'm streaming on all platforms and 
uh, that's yeah, Ivana Estelle True Crime. And then I have a regular website, IvanaEstelle.com, where I just do my regular writing. I do reviews, I do um, anonymous interviews, and I create a story from the interview that I've done. Um, I tell my own stories, it's a little bit more fun and lighthearted. So, the light and the dark on my website, because you can also check out my True Crime section too. That's really dope. Yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, well check her out um, and that concludes this episode of the What You're Thinking podcast.